a predator would probably want to take me before taking you because I'm smaller. Um, because, okay, if you want to use that term. Time for the latest installment of Change My Mind, where we rationalize our positions on controversial issues. This time, we set up shop at the Dallas Women's March to take on the topic of male privilege. You're benefiting from white male privilege. Your three boys have hit the American trifecta of privilege. True. They are white, straight males. Yeah. Women are sent off to college with rape whistles while men are not. Women who have to take extra care walking down a street to be safe. You know, it's a sort of invasion of boundaries of women that men do not experience. What can men do leaving here? Be better. <laughs> not convinced. But what do you think? What defines privilege and are males, particularly white males, in 2020 more privileged than anybody else? Let me know in the comments section. Now I should note we did have a few disturbances, namely violent assaults uh, from two transgender individuals. But you can see more on that if you click the video in the box above. On to our first productive conversation with a locked and loaded Amari. Men of quality support women's equality. All right, That's your right. name is Omari. That's right. What's can I see your other sign? Sure. Your hate does not make America great. That's right. Well, I think we both agree. No, no hate would make a country great. That's right. But that doesn't mean that anyone who votes for Donald Trump is hateful, does it? That's true. It doesn't mean that. Okay, good. All right, because you know a lot of these. That's why we sit down and do this to try and cut through the sound bites and signage. So we can actually have a conversation. Yeah, well, um, I appreciate that. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. you sitting down. Well, uh, so on the I don't point know of, how, how familiar you are with kind of what we do. Um, I'm not at all. But okay. I do. So let me brief. With, let me brief you with that. But we did have this instance where uh, yes, you you were saying you don't have white privilege. There's a sign saying there's no such thing. Uh, I think it's male privilege. Right. Oh, sorry. I mixed them up. Does there, does white privilege not exist also? Uh, well, today we're talking about male privilege. But <laughs> do you but think you have male of, privilege? Uh, I do actually. Okay. All and right. I think they're the same, you know, root cause, okay. which is the people that so have the most let's power. Talk, so let's talk about that. So yeah. this is kind of what we do with the Change My Mind. Is right. uh, the idea is to not be a bumper sticker slogan or just oh, a sign. Okay. Um, it's the opportunity to rationalize our positions on, on controversial topics. Oh, okay. I do not believe Wait, that male your, privilege is a thing. Are you are you saying that you're? Uh, so your if I can just finish my point. Sure. Here. Yeah. I don't believe that male privilege, as it's presented, particularly from uh, uh, the ilk of folks who are here today, is a thing. Okay. Um, I don't believe that we live in a rape culture. Uh, if you disagree uh, with me, you are more than welcome to change my mind. So it seems like we can start with male privilege. Yeah, Okay. But, but also, are you saying that this whole setup isn't to just prove you're right and uh, and prove the other side wrong and increase your viewership? Well, I don't I, I don't know. You you, you <laughs> present your argument, we'll see. <laughs> Wait, so well, now I'll you, let you, you set everything up. So, I sure, mean, is yeah. that not the goal for you? No, the goal is for everyone to see something that's unedited and not a cable news bar. Oh, okay, yeah. So none cool. of this will be edited. Everything that you say yeah. will 100% air. All right. And well. I won't interrupt you or cut you off. Wow. So you're more than welcome cool. to change my mind. All right. And it's Coop Cooper. Uh, Crowder. No, Cooper was the other, other oh, gentleman right. we spoke Sorry. with. Crowder. I just said utter. Like I'm a yeah. hello mother, hello fodder. All, All right. right, Crowder. So let's do this. Good. I, I appreciate the, uh, the the candor, too. Oh, so great. The positive uh, setup you got going on. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know if that's sarcasm privilege. or not. I don't no, know not at all. Okay, cool. Yeah. So male let, privilege. let's I don't get think in there. Sort of male privilege. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the fact that uh, you got where you are and you've got this power, you know, a woman could have done it, but it would have been a lot harder for mm. her. So male privilege is this idea that um, your life is not, uh, being a male doesn't mean you don't have tr difficulty or challenge. Sure. It just means that your gender is not one of the things making your life more challenging. Okay. And that is exclusive to males? Uh, I mean, all ki there's all kinds of different privileges, but, okay. but in terms of gender, so there could be female are, privilege as well? Uh, no, no, not really. No, no, I don't think so. Okay, so then how would you, I guess, sort of substantiate that? Substantiate? Yeah, why, wh like, what, so what like, allows you to make the presupposition that my life inherently as a male is easier than a female and that privilege only exists for males? See, that's where I have a disconnect. Uh, all right. Uh, I mean, I could pull up some stats, but I mean, generally we know that women make less money um, than men. Really? Okay. Uh, women are the victims of rape uh, and sexual violence at the hands of men much more often. Okay. 
uh, than the other way around. Right. Uh, and you kind of just go down the list of the ways that women get screwed over in our society, um, and that. Uh, w- that I appreciate. Yeah, you, by the way, you're making a great. I want you to continue. You're making a great case. So um, it was paid more. Yeah. Raped more right. women. Yeah. Um, and please, yeah, continue. But I just want to make I sure mean, I keep I, track I, of them. I, I, these I, are I, great. I, this is the whole point. Okay. I just want to hear what you. Yeah. No. I, I mean, I haven't looked at the whole list of just sort of even just. That's uh, a good start. It's, it, and it's it's something as simple as the lived experience of women. Right. Where uh, my wife, who you, she, she would have loved to have this conversation with you, but her job prevents her from doing that. Mm-hmm. She can't be on camera. But um, she, her experience is she walks down the street and, um, you know, depending on the men that are there, she, her, you know, she's objectified. She's turned into a sexual object right. by a group of men who are saying, oh, yeah, I want to do this and that to your body. That's, that's and, a really valid point. So, right. object, you know, walking down the street. Yeah, just not feeling safe in your own skin or feeling like you can be a full human being. Whereas sure. me, I, I don't have to worry what I wear when I walk out the house. I don't have to uh, worry if I have a tank top that my right. you know, cleavage is showing and that I'm going to get unwanted that's attention. Good point. So, uh, that's, uh, Crowder, you're great. You're great. I, I uh, you're, this is a... Well, I pre- no, yeah, I, no, I want, I'm sitting. I just want to listen first and hear you. Kind okay. Of make, yeah. Because so, I think maybe where we would agree right. is legally there are no recognized rights that men enjoy in 2019. 20, sorry, 2020. I don't know if you do that. I still keep saying 2019. Yeah. I there do. are no legally recognized uh, rights afforded to men in 2020, not afforded to women. Uh, so we would agree on that. And you're talking more so societal sort of ramifications. Well, and actually, I'm not sure about that. You know, women got the right to vote in 1920. So we're 100 years on from that. So they can vote. Yeah. Um, but what other things are in there that, uh, you know, I, I, I don't, I'm not sure that legally there aren't biases against women still. Yeah. Uh, there may be, there may not be. I don't think but there I, are. Okay. Well, <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. If you, if you I, have some, I would be willing no, no, to No, no, I don't have it. any, but I would be curious to look and see. So maybe, for example, um, you know, if you, uh, this whole um, uh, abortion thing, mm-hmm. if you have a child and the child isn't healthy because you were taking drugs at the time because you're, a, you're an addict or whatever, mm. um, and then you get thrown in jail for child abuse, um, the, the woman's getting thrown in jail. The man who impregnated her is not getting thrown in jail. Maybe that's something to look at as far as a standard that impacts women I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just a little... differently than it does men. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I... No, go uh, ahead. Um, do you mean that if a, if a mother abuses her child and goes to jail, you believe the father should go to jail? No, I'm saying uh, in terms of uh, pre... Uh, what do you call it? Prenatal drug use and okay. um, you know you, you have a, a child born with some right or, or uh, that's not healthy because they didn't because they were doing drugs they were do, doing yeah. drugs or they just didn't get the right prenatal care and that, that's considered abuse I'm not really sure I okay. just I'm just saying well I, okay, well, I just want to make sure that because we, if I'm, we had this conversation a hundred years ago and a day yeah. then it would be like well clearly women are legally not uh, right. Don't have the same rights as far as voting. Yeah, for example. Right. But what other examples could there be that we don't pay attention to or aren't as uh, pivotal as the right sure. to vote? So I, I want to make sure that I that I understand too. Um, you brought up uh, the idea of women are, are raped more often. Yeah. The idea that women are paid less, uh, being able to walk down the street. And I just wanted to see where we find common ground. Sounds to me like today we probably agree that it's, it's not really a legal issue as far as rights afforded. You're talking more about societal issues, which I think is a valid point. Right. I think which it's sort of discredits the person argument. person issue, really. Yeah. It's like, yeah. how do we treat our neighbors and our friends or our or people we don't know? How do we what? treat our women? Yeah, I think exactly. it's really important. Yep. Um, before we get to those, uh, I know you mentioned women getting the right to vote. How did that happen? Uh, my understanding is that there was uh, women suffragists who went out and marched just like we're doing now so that okay. uh, women could uh, cast a ballot. Right. And how, like, was that most women that did that? Yeah. Uh, I don't think most women were out there, but I don't know. Okay. I'm not a, I but wish I were I as good at, do, do you know? Or well, I'm, I'm, I'm questioning because I don't understand. Like you were saying that men obviously were in positions of power as when you first sat oh, down. Yeah. And oh, that, yeah, look at that. Yeah. Congress is... Uh, well, hold on, I'm going back to when they got the right to vote. Okay. <laughs> so how does a woman cast a ballot to get the right to vote if she can't vote? Uh, she has to agitate. She has to... Uh, so who gave the right could, to vote, I guess is my question. Uh, who gave them the right to vote? Who switched um, the law so that women could vote? Well, um, 
the men in power must have decided okay. that they should do that. Yeah. Good for them. <laughs> Progressive men at that I, I, point. I don't know if I could pat them on the back. I mean, it should have been done. It should have been like the. Well, someone had to do it. Don't deserve a pat in the back well, at all? Well, some, someone did not have to uh, say that women were inferior in the first place to not right. be able to vote. So that's why. And those are the men that started it. And those men should have fixed it before it became a problem. Sure. So we just did, as men, what we should have done in the first place. Right. So I don't know if we get any special kudos for... Not uh, we, for, but the men who passed that's it. What I, I don't know if they get any special kudos for doing what I uh, think so. I think when done. someone does something right, I, I they should be praised for it. I don't know about that. Because, no? you, yeah, yeah, okay. something right, you're writing a wrong. Yeah, so, I think that people <laughs> should be praised for doing that. I, 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 I'm not sure. I'm well, it not sounds sure. to me like you're trying to right wrongs today of social justice, no? Yeah, I am. But I don't want to be pat on the back for doing what I should be doing. I want to, I, I want to lift up the, the people that are being oppressed. Sure. And, pat, and when they step up and I'm supporting them, they deserve the credit for for the change that they forced us to make okay. on their behalf. I, That's yeah, what I, I agree. Mean. Not that it's bad that these men uh, I, I signed the I think all the of right them deserve laws. the praise. I think it's a all good right. thing. I think it's a good thing, all for right. example. I just, it, I, like I think people, you know, I think the fact that, uh, you know, Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation should have been done a m much longer before that. Yeah. But I think that that's a good thing. Yeah. And well, I, think I certainly, that at the time, that's a good point. I, yeah, I, I think that we appreciate Lincoln for that. Like that. Yeah. I certainly appreciate it. Well, those, but are, good, again, those are good points, though. Those but are good points. Again, even Lincoln, I don't say, uh, you know, oh, what a great man. I, you know, I, I'm, if he didn't exist and he hadn't done that, I could still be in chains right now. So, of course, right. I appreciate it. But I don't want to. Or if you were I born in Africa, you could still be in chains right now. Uh, I suppose. In the Middle or, East. Or, you know, or Qatar. Or, I don't know, anywhere. Uh, yeah, slavery no. all across the world. This is true. Yeah, it's so, terrible. Point being, uh, don't raise up this man because he used his privilege for good above the folks that, you know, uh, in the down, that were one down and rose up. Yeah. Put them first. Let's put the attention where it belongs. Can the we, people who have fought for their rights and gotten their rights and pushed uh, the more progressive among the oppressors. Yeah. To well, let me do ask you this. Right let me thing. ask you this. What if, let's say Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, right? Let's say Abraham Lincoln outlawed slavery, and let's say slaves themselves didn't want to be free. This is not the case. Missing a hypothetical, right? <laughs> this is where is this going? This is going well, I'm saying with the hell. women's suffrage movement. Okay. Wouldn't that person, wouldn't those people deserve to be praised if, for example, the overwhelming majority of women didn't want the right to vote? They were the ones advocating against it, not men. So wouldn't the men deserve the praise if they gave them the right to vote when women didn't want it? I'm totally confused by this question. The majority of women didn't want the right to vote. They is were that against so? it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Do you know I why? I did not know that. No, yeah, why? The reason why was because they thought that it would actually increase their work burden, ah. decrease their quality of life. And a lot of people don't know this, but when you had to vote, you know, it was actually a, a privilege in the sense that you had to either be a landowner, you were eligible for the draft. <laughs> but why would... Bucket why, brigade. Are you why, in a bucket brigade? No. That's where it's mandatory firefighting service, so, right? And so women this. didn't want the right to vote, which is kind of interesting. Wait, a lot what, of people assume they did. Why do, Men wanted women to have the right to vote. Why do people fight so hard against these groups getting their rights to vote if it's such a burden? Well, my point is they didn't. It, there wasn't a push to vote. And then when it came to a vote, most women didn't want it. It was the men who passed it. So would that change, assuming I'm not lying, yeah. would that change your opinion at all if men, even in the face of a majority of women not wanting the right to vote, said, you know what, it's the right thing to do, you should still have the right to vote. Uh, do they deserve any praise? Uh, <laughs> no? I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. But I do think but, your but points, I, so and, I do think your points this were, is really good, because I need to uh, learn up, get up, learn about history because I think that's very powerful that you're aware of these things and you can pull out these factoids yeah. that well, I think um, that's a factoid that's pretty big a factoid <laughs> would be like you know a, a, a black widow's venom is 15 times more potent right, than that right. of a diamondback rattlesnake right, right, the fact right. that a majority of women didn't want the right to vote is kind of you know We've been lied to at large. Yeah, yeah. If okay. I'm not lying now. Yeah, no, no, for sure. Um, I'm definitely going to go look that but that's up, so and I appreciate And I didn't mean to disparage your factoid. No, 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 factoid. no, I appreciate no, it. No, this is, this is I'm history. A, I'm a white male. I can take it. Um, <laughs> you, can just, you can call me a piece of sh for all I care. I, get, I, I, I understand it. As Way far as the other points that you made, um, <laughs> let's go back through them. The idea of women paid more. 
right. Oh, also, I, I, I got Okay, well then let me rattle off really quick. Right. Women aren't paid more for the same work. Women are actually not sexually abused or domestically abused more. And as far as the They're anecdotal, not. no, as far as the anecdotal idea that women can walk uh, alone home at night, well, it wouldn't necessarily be the same for a 115 pound shrimpy man and a 180 pound female MMA fighter. So that's anecdotal, we can't really look at that statistically. But no, actually men are raped more often when you include the prison population. And that does matter because men are convicted much more harshly for the exact same crimes as women. As far as the 77 cents on the dollar, if you believe that, I think you really should do a little bit more research because all that does is compare the median income from women in the workforce to the median income of men in the workforce. It doesn't take into account hours worked, it doesn't take into account risk of labor, it doesn't take into account travel, time away from family. When you account for all of those facets, women actually, in most studies make a little bit more than men, but exactly the same. So I think it's important that if we're going to have this conversation, and that's why I wanted you to sit down and, and, and speak, and I know some people came in hot, I think it does matter to speak the truth. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. You could drop the mic, Crowder, you just killed it. Well, you yeah. said you were short for time, <laughs> and I didn't want to interrupt you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Crowder. Thank you, man. Um, I, I appreciate I'll, it. Omari? I'll, I, yes, I'll say this. That's one thing I will say as a white man. Stephen, such an uninteresting name. Well, you know, something like Omari. I'll never forget your name, I, you but know, I'll always forget Bob. <laughs> but Stephen, uh, your resume is going to get more looks and more callbacks than mine because your name is regular. You know, really or boring. Yeah. It's well, I don't know. I'd like to see. I'd like to see the stats on oh, that. Oh, that you can look up. You I was also sure the, the, my name up. was also associated with the first martyr. So my parents right. weren't necessarily destining me for greatness with that one. This is Martyrdom, the first that guy who was killed for Christ. Let's name our son after him. Yeah, yeah. I'm not thrilled um, about it. Yeah, but I guess, uh, no, you, you definitely dropped a lot of uh, uh, points there that I don't have a response for. But I just say, um, as a man in my heart, I know that women out there are uh, struggling under oppression uh, all over this country. And the facts are the facts, but people can choose different facts. And I, and I just know what I I don't think people I can choose different heart. facts. I think your first statement was correct. Facts are the facts. And I think that, yes, there is... And there are examples of male privilege for sure, but there are also examples of female privilege. Yeah. And so I think it's important to recognize that there are privileges that go both ways. There is white privilege in the sense that there are certain advantages that white people would have, but there's also black privilege, that advantages that black people would have. There's male privilege in that certainly there are some biological advantages <laughs> males enjoy. There's female privilege in that there are a lot of advantages females enjoy, but you don't believe that. Uh, advantage doesn't mean the same as privilege. Privilege is like an overarching uh, pattern of preference and yeah. power in a society. And that's what you got, buddy. That's what I got because I'm a white male? Yeah, that's right. I don't necessarily know that I agree with that. I know you don't. And I, I don't try to change I, I your mind. I do not agree but, with it. But if you come back with some up. statistics, well, it's only <laughs> yeah, up when no. you want to go. But I appreciate yeah, it, Omar. Thank, thank you. I appreciate man. you. Thank you very much. All right, I appreciate keeping me. it civil. Okay, yeah, for sure. 100%. Be well. Stay safe. Yeah, I hope we get to do this again sometime. I'll Absolutely. Look up the facts and we can do a, uh, sure. an encore. Sure. Okay, thank you, Omar. <laughs> thank you very much, man. Well, that went swell. R remember, if you want these videos to continue, please do consider joining Mug Club at ladderwithcredit.com slash mug club. $69 annually for students, vets, active military. You get this wonderful hand-etched mug and a full daily show not available on YouTube along with uh, the Blaze TV's entire catalog. It is the only thing that allows these videos to continue. If not, that's fine. Enjoy the rest of the show. Bookmark this channel and check back for new videos every weekday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Let's get back to it. Meet Hannah. Male privilege is, is a myth. It's not a real thing as it's been presented here today. If you disagree, you're, you're more than welcome to, to change my mind. Um, male privilege as in that men have more advantages than women do? Okay. I mean, of course. I mean, sexism exists in every like tier of our society in every way. In terms of employment, women still get paid um, for the same position, for the same work. Um, can, can I do one thing less, really quickly? Yeah. Just because I just want to make sure we don't. Um, as a cis white male, and we've had some people who were upset, uh, can you define woman? Um, I think gender is more fluid than people who are more traditionalist. Um, like to think I am very for trans rights and loving trans people and wanting them to live their fullest lives sure. like safely. Um, I define gender as what you def what you um, identify with. Um, well, how do we define woman? I, I just want to make sure that I understand. Someone who identifies as female. Okay. I mean, there's. I mean, it's a complicated world. I can see how people who. Um, maybe from more traditional societies, like my parents. Uh, my parents are from Ethiopia. Even though they're progressive, like politically and socially, it's 
certain things are kind of difficult to wrap your mind around, and that doesn't make you a bigot necessarily. Sure. Um, but I, I'm very for trans so, rights. So when you are talking about sexism or systemic advantages toward men not afforded to women, you are also including trans well, men to women. Trans women have. Um, their own issues. I mean, trans people are beaten up, attacked, killed in the streets simply for being who they are. I mean, I am terrified for them, to be honest, particularly in communities that sure. may not be as educated, may not have as, mu as much exposure to people like them. Okay. Um, but. Okay, I just wanted to make sure yeah, that I didn't yeah. overstep my bounds, so we are including trans male to females among women. Okay. Yeah. So continue um, as you, uh, you were presenting the idea of. Uh, systemic male privilege? Um, I, I think the whole idea that women um, have their role in the home and um, that they don't belong in the workforce, they don't belong in things, in positions of leadership, I think that has been dismantled to a large extent. Sure. But there is very much still um, the idea of, you and know, you think women. That's a good thing? Of what? the idea that women shouldn't necessarily be in the home? I think the wave of feminism that I see and I understand that most young people around my age uh, accept is that um, women can do whatever they want to do and that's what I believe. If a woman wants to be a stay-at-home mom, great. If a woman Good. wants to be a career woman and never get married, phenomenal. I think women should do what makes them happy um, People should just do what makes them I, happy. I would agree with all that, except yeah. if a, she wants to be a career woman or not get married, phenomenal. I think it's her choice. I don't think it's a good one, and statistics would bear that out. But I agree. I think feminism, if I'm not mistaken, if we both agree, is a ch women making the choice. I think people, in general, if you're not um, breaking any laws or hurting anyone, you should do whatever you want. You should be allowed to do what you want. As long as, you know, under those parameters. Yeah. Um, I agree with you. I also principle. think... Going back to the idea of like basic feminism. Well, I think, the idea is male privilege, so I guess- I think we need to talk about one more thing when we talk about uh, the two genders and their relationship. We need to talk about race and feminism. Um, a lot of the times, black women feel disheartened by mainstream feminism or what they call white feminism because the statistic, they bring us a, uh, a statistic about uh, women make this number cents to every dollar. And black but women fact, make even less. Yes, yes. So and I Hispanic think, women make less as well. Uh, and Native American women. We always forget Native Americans. Um, Sorry. Um, no, that's not just on you. I think as a culture we do. Sure. Um, but we have to always, always, always be cognizant of intersectionality when it comes to um, relationships between the genders. So a lot to keep track of. So uh, let me, I guess, try and laser in on some points so we can find out where we agree or disagree. Um, you talked about systemic discrimination uh, and male privilege. That's kind of what obviously is a catalyst for this conversation. Can you point to any single right in 2020 afforded to a man, not afforded to a woman? Before we get to societal, because I would agree with you, but legally speaking. I think, I, as of today, this day and age, Yeah. Um, but what you have to understand is that a lot of things on paper are set up a certain way for equality, but in practice, it's very different. It's kind of like, in theory, there's equality, but in practice, there's so many discrepancies. The glass ceiling still exists, okay, so and it on, will so exist. So in theory, we have equality. What do you mean by that, as far as the law? Because we have the law, but there are so many... Okay, so the law, so much we're equal in, under the law completely, but then in practice, yeah. you're saying we're not. Okay. And there are certain things that are different, like for example, men can be drafted, women won't be into the right. military. That's female privilege. Um, yeah, I guess you could put it that way. Um, it depends on perspective. Uh, women are not allowed. Well, how does that depend on perspective? Uh, women. Is that not a privilege wait. to not have to not be well, eligible I for mean, the draft? Some people want to be in the military, and that's you know maybe. Yeah, but women have the choice. Men don't. It's complex. For example, um, in in Iraq, the women are not allowed in the front lines of combat. Sure. Despite having all the training, being decorated officials in the army, um, they are not allowed to. And also, They're how also do you? Also, not allowed to talk back. Um, in the in the army. In Iraq. 
I'm saying, and I, women, I, I'm and saying they don't, there, there aren't equal rights in Iraq for women and men. We would both agree on that. I'm, I'm talking about yeah. Western civilization, the United States. But it sounds to me no, like... No, 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 no. I'm talking about in the Iraq War. Um, oh, women in the United States military yes, not serving in the Yes, in the Iraq lines. War, yeah. Okay, because they can now. Yeah, and then let's talk about... Um, and you see that as systemic discrimination, not allowing women in the front lines. I mean, if they are just as skilled in combat, if they've completed their training, they're if not, they are decorated officers... They're far less skilled. We had to lower the PT requirements for women to make it in. Women couldn't meet the same requirements that men did, so we lowered them for women. Well, in combat, it's not like... It's with guns. It's with military-grade weapons. So it doesn't require the same amount okay, of... Okay, we lowered the we lowered the ruck times as far as how long you run with a pack on your back or carrying someone who's also in your platoon. We lowered the pull-ups. We lowered the push-ups. We lowered everything for female standards. And I mean, that's female privilege, right? Men had to meet a certain set of standards, and when women couldn't meet them, we lowered them. So I just think... That's not female privilege. Oh, okay. That's, um, that's promoting equality among the genders. Um, How is that promoting equality, though? By lowering by the standards? By allowing them to be involved directly in um, serving our country, giving women all the same opportunities. Mm. It's like, um, I think you're moving into the territory of affirmative action. That's what I sense here. Well, no, what we were talking about was the draft, and I think that's important. Yeah. Because you said that's not a privilege for a woman to not be automatically eligible for the draft where we both agreed that feminism should be a choice, right? That's the idea of a woman choosing her life. A woman has the privilege of choosing not to go in the military. A man doesn't. And this is kind of important because it ties to the idea, you know, of, of uh, women's right to vote. You do realize that men only had the right to vote because they were eligible for the draft and bucket brigade and owned property. I know. And women no. got the right to vote without being eligible for the draft. Um, I believe that women had... Um Wait, what, say it again? Okay, so are you, so you, do you know in women's suffrage, when women were given the right to vote, you know- 1920, yeah. not for women of color. Women of color didn't sure. get the right to vote we'll for decades. we'll get back decades. to that. But 1919 ratified in 1920, yes. And black women were, um, but before even that, within the women's suffrage movement, there was a lot of racism. There were most of the women- Hold on a second, hold on a second. Let's stay with this, because right now we're talking about okay. male and female. So, okay. do you, who gave women the right to vote? Who voted for women to have the right to vote? Progressive men? Men, sure. Progressive did most, men. Did, okay, did most women... And they had to fight for 80 years. But they didn't. For most women didn't want the right to vote. Did you know that? The majority of them didn't. Do you know why? Because of the draft. Mm. Because of Bucket Brigade. Because voting was not seen as just an inherent birthright no matter what. It came with certain sets of responsibilities. To allow women to vote who didn't want it, I think we removed plenty, those responsibilities. I think when you are taught black is blue your entire life, you will believe black is blue. They I were agree. taught that women did not belong in, because if they're voting, they may vote for women into office, and they did not believe that women belonged in positions of power and positions of leadership. They were brainwashed. Mm. That's being indoctrinated. Okay. So the men who were brainwashing them to not be able to vote were the ones who overwhelmingly supported and got them the right to vote, even though women men didn't want it. Men overwhelmingly supported the right to vote for women? As far as people... Who are the people who are oppressing women for centuries? Who are forcing them in arranged marriages where they're raped and being forced to bear children that they, they didn't want, that they, they couldn't provide for? Who... Women were oppressed since the beginning of time, except for maybe a few classical uh, Greek societies. Women were oppressed in every corner of the world. Women, the majority of men did not support the right to vote. The majority of men were trying to well, disenfranchise uh, the second. women's suffrage movement since it begun I, I, in the little, 1840s. I'm a little confused. Um, how do laws men get passed? Men were the ones who put Susan B. Anthony in jail for trying to let's register st let's to vote. Let's stick with the vote. How do laws get passed? through both houses of Congress. Okay, and in order for it to pass, I just want to make, assume I don't know a whole lot. Does it require a majority to vote it in? Yes. Okay, and was that majority back then, would it have comprised of men? <sighs> men, when they were facing the pressure of a cultural shift, they did what was right. Okay. They had changes of hearts, um, they had they changed their perspective, and that was because of the tireless work of these 
men tried to disenfranchise them every step of the way. No. That's not accurate. But let's move on to today, to 2020. Maybe we'll just disagree. I do have some sources here afterward, which will be interesting, some kind of data on how many women wanted the right to vote. Again, provided that it came with the current set of responsibilities uh, that voting did at the time. But we go back to today, we both, reckon, we both agree there are no legally recognized um, rights afforded to men, not to women. But you mentioned systemic privilege uh, or, or societal privilege. Mm -hmm. um, could you give me some examples of that? So in 2020, what is male privilege? Male privilege is not having to walk down the street and being afraid of being sexually harassed, of being catcalled, um, of being objectified, being treated as an object of sex and not a person with thoughts and feelings and dreams and goals and complexities. You don't have to walk down the street and feel afraid the way women do in certain parts of the country. Some of us do. Uh, and some of us much more so than women. And do you want to talk about other societies in the world? No, I want to talk about the to United talk? States. Because I would totally agree with you uh, with societies like you mentioned. I think you mentioned uh, Ethiopia or India or Islamic countries. I would agree with you. Let's talk about let's Ethiopia say is United a Christian States. country, but... Sure. No, uh, I didn't say Ethiopia was an Islamic yeah, country, yeah. but I know Ethiopia... Yeah not necessarily the same kind of rights that we have yeah. in the United States. And as a general rule across the entire Islamic world, women are not afforded the same rights as men. I think that's horrible. So for the record, I obviously think women should have the right to vote. But where we disagree is I do think it's a female privilege to not be forced into the draft. Um, now, I do take your point here where you talk about uh, walking down the street. I mean, I was just, we just had someone assault us right here to try and steal the sign. Um, it was actually a woman. Um, so it does happen with men as well. Um, now, as far as sexual assault, I would agree. I hate the sexual object objectification of women. That's why I have a problem with feminism, because as I'm sure you know, women's liberation, the pornification of culture, it's been supported by most prominent feminists. And I've even seen women here supporting sex workers. So um, I think you and I would find common ground there. I think with, uh, as far as like, so as far as sex work, um, it's not something that I would want for myself or my family, but I think if it's two consenting adults, I don't see the point of criminalizing. I don't know if we should completely legalize it right sure. now, but at least uh, decriminalizing it, it may not be a fabulous life choice, yeah. but um, an adult has a right to, and oftentimes it's the conditions of people's lives. That's what people understand, I don't, don't yeah, understand. I don't want to get, it's just we were talking yeah. about sexual objectification. I, I'm yeah. saying we agree on that. Yeah. I don't agree with you on the idea of walking home and not being fearful. First off, I think every woman should have their head in a swivel, and I think every man should. And yeah, I do think that men commit a significant amount, a majority of the violent crime in this country, but it's also perpetrated against men. In other words, if we're both walking down the street no. at night, I am more likely to be violently I'm attacked more than you about, are. I'm talking more about like sexual assaults, uh, abductions, things like that. Um, I, a predator would probably want to take me before taking you because I'm smaller, um, because, okay, if you want to use that term. Oh, what term would you use? Um, I mean, you don't, anyway, that's besides the point. I also- Physically, physically I'm stronger and you're physically weaker. That's what I'm saying. In other words, for the same reason that I would try and help you if someone were physically assaulting you because I'm stronger yeah. than you. Is yeah. that it? It and someone like could drag me into a van a lot easier than they could drag you into a van. Yeah, it'd be it's harder okay. to drag my fat ass into a van. <laughs> um, but That being said, men are the victims of violent crimes more than women. What about slut shaming? Okay, well what I guess we're just, let's people? just switch topics. What That's about me. slut shaming? Um, what about um, promiscuity and how women are um, demonized for having sexuality? because we live in a very um, sex negative society in general, but- I'm sorry, whole, I thought you just said women were uh, objectified and seen as sex objects too often, but now you're saying we're demonizing women no, if we see them sexually. No, you know what I mean. I really don't. Um, I think whenever, like for example, if you were to have X amount of partners sexually, like if I were to have, if I slept with 12 people, and one of my male cousins slept with 12 people. Who would be called a slut? I would call you both. Maybe you would. I'm saying society in general um, 
slut shames women a lot more. And I will admit, it's women who slut shame women a lot. Yeah. Um, women actually, as a matter of fact, this is kind of interesting where you talked about the yeah. objectification of women. Did you, did you actually know that women, when they've conducted these studies, and they have these sources for you, uh, they did uh, a more recent one, very specific with online dating, but in mm -hmm. general, women grade men far more harshly on physical traits than men grade women. Men grade women on a bell curve but and actually are far more for forgiving. Example, women are far harsher in their expectations of men I, physically. That's false. That is, on its face, absolutely, unequivocally a lie. Incorrect. Women are judged based on their looks way more. I mean, douchey young guys see women walk by and be like, oh, she's a nine. Oh, she's a seven. Oh, that person's out of my league. First of all, no human being is superior to any other human being. I mean, I really, certain res facets, sure. I really resent the notion that like, oh, that person is out of my league. I can't pursue them. Um, but women are, going back to the 10 scale, women are um, judged on the one to 10 scale a lot more than men are. I don't walk by and go through well, and that's, go, that's oh, anecdotal. I'm talking oh about that's, that guy is a seven. Oh, I should, he's not out of my league. Let me go talk mm -hmm. to him. That's not how women approach so men. Would you... Women are judged based on their looks a lot more. Women are called ugly. Women are called, okay, can I give you an example, specifically what I'm talking about? This is from the 90s. This is from the OJ trial. Every day, the press would um, criticize Marsha Clark's, she has no fashion, she has ugly hair, she looks frazzled with her horrible curly hair. And they never go, oh, OJ, what an ugly tie he was wearing. Oh, Johnny Cochran. Oh, uh, you know, he got his suit at Goodwill. Like, no one would say that. Actually, I think of everyone involved with the OJ trial, the one most remembered for crazy suits was Johnny Cochran. He's the one who was no, trying to but he was not. he was not criticized every single day and attacked for her looks the way Marsha Clark was attacked. People were calling her unattractive. People were saying she had no sense of style, like I said about her hair. They were not getting that. People would be like, oh wow, that suit is kind of out there. And so this is an example of male privilege to you? Yes, because they wouldn't be like, oh, he's ugly, he's unappealing because of his looks. And also, can I uh, make I just, another? I'm sorry, I, I, wanna, I don't want to get into I No, no, make, I want to move on because I I've been called ugly so many times and rightfully it's so. It's not. It's, rightfully so. So they, it's the idea, the anecdotal is what we want to deal with. People here. didn't teach you that your looks, first of all, you're not ugly by any means. Second of Neither all. Neither are you. <laughs> thank you. And by the way, um, my wife there is out of my league, and so would you be if I were a single male. I have no problem saying No, that. she's not, because no human being is better than anybody else. They are Herself, in certain facets. I'm sure she's she far is more physically attractive I'm than sure I am. I'm sure she is beautiful, but she's not better than you because she's beautiful. She's more beautiful than I am. But she doesn't... I don't know if that's true, but More she, people want to have sex with her than me. <laughs> Can I bring up another point? It's a little bit unrelated, but it's, it's related to Marsha Clark from the OJ trial. I, people okay. call powerful women bitches. They're like, oh, she's bossy. Oh, she's a bitch whenever she has strong views. But if a man were to conduct himself in the same way and give off the same demeanor, they'd be like, oh, wow, what a strong, powerful man. He's really getting it done. He's really sticking it to them. Yeah, but women agree. but women are taught, oh, she's bossy. She's a bitch. She needs to stay in her place. She needs to. Or, for example, um, when women have a serious face, oh, we should smile more, honey. Yes, smile I think more, women darling. should smile more. I mean, I think everyone should can smile I, can more. I, can I yes, can I express but, it? Can I, because we've gotten completely off the statistical, okay. so let me, this just ends up being personal, so let's have a personal okay. conversation here. Maybe you, because I just had this discussion not that long ago with a female relative, okay. A man is physically attracted to warmth and tenderness in a woman, right? That is an attractive yeah. trait because we like nice women. You just talked about bitch, bitchy, right? So the That's idea- That's what they call women when they're powerful. No, you know? it's what they call women when they're acting like bitches, but yes. Uh, no. Men Marcia get called Clark assholes. Not a bitch. But hold, I'm she not was a very home. compassionate me, woman, and finish? people are calling her a bitch all the time because she was a powerful woman. People call Hillary Clinton- I would like to be able to finish okay, my I'm point sorry, without I'm sorry. being- Okay, I'm sorry, I don't want to be accused of male privilege, but you are speaking very long. I do want okay. to make my point. Okay. Okay. So men are physically attracted to tenderness and warmth from a woman. Yes. A smiling woman is biologically more attractive to a man than a frowning woman. Now let me tell you why. Because men live particularly to please their wives Can and I? women. Now, hold on, let me finish. Okay. And so to us, it is attractive to see our wife or to see the woman that we love smiling. A man 
and I'm sure if you've been in a relationship for any period of time, right? How often do you get the, are you okay, sweetie? Are you happy? I've never been like in a relationship, upset. but. Okay, yeah. well, this happens a lot. It's yeah. often a point of conflict for my wife and I. When did I do, are you okay? Are you happy? Um, a man saying, hey, it's attractive for a woman to smile more is the equivalent to a woman saying it's attractive for a man to listen more. Okay, can I, I'm going to respond to that. Okay. Um, the whole notion of like telling women to smile transcends relationships. It's even down the street, uh, men come up to women and go, oh, hey, honey, hey, sweetheart, smile more, smile. And it's a very like condescending thing. It's very patronizing. It's very much... If a stranger came up and said, hey, sugar baby, smile more, I'd be like, yeah, okay, that's kind of crappy, but I, I, that's... No, again, no, I wouldn't be anecdote. offended. I wouldn't be offended, but I understand it's symptomatic of the culture of patronizing women, of uh, treating women differently than you would treat men in that way. We shouldn't. And that, if that makes sense. But um, you just supported lowering the PT requirements in the military so women could join up because they're weaker. Is that patronizing or is that equality? Because I'm confused. That's equality. Okay, so saying women, you can't do as many push-ups or pull-ups, or you can't do the 16-mile the, the run, I don't know what the PT requirements are now, it may be different. Uh, you can't do it as well as men, so we're going to lower it so that you can join the military. Okay. Being, That's equality. Can I say something about the military more is again, too? Um, for example, if you look at, there's not just one general of the military, just how expansive the military is, there are several. Right. Do you see even one? And a general is not doing, they're older men. They're not doing physical, like, physically like strenuous workouts it's mostly administrative and they don't let women do even like the desk jobs no yeah. if that makes that's sense correct like, uh, do you do you, are, do you have any military in your family no okay well I, I grew up in a military family that's not correct at all it's not a general's job is not at all administrative I frankly I would say that's a bit do. of female privilege because you're kind of glib on that topic it's an incredibly intellectually strenuous and emotionally I'm strenuous sure. I'm not saying in, they're, because they're not you have done to by any means it's yeah. military science I'm sure is complex I'm sure they're very intelligent yeah. but what I'm saying is that's not a physical job as much as the guys in the lower you can't tell me it's just as physical as the guy who are you know, on the ground no, running in Iraq. No, it's not just physical, but men are uh, more suited to it, and that's why they tend to be generals. More. Why do? Why are men more suited to it? Well, there are two reasons. You just said that they're older men, and yes, I don't know if you they're know how. They're typically older. Yeah, yeah. I've do you seen know how them long it takes to become a general? Decades, probably. Yes, I don't know. exactly. So that would go back to men being in the military longer than women, certainly in those positions. And yeah, listen. But I'm this sure is, if there's the, like if okay. there are military, like for example, the McCains are like military okay. royalty. Sure. I'm sure it'd be much easier for them to get that than like above off the street that may be so i think um, uh, but i do appreciate i think we have some other people who might want to sit down oh okay so well, i do appreciate i loved to, it thank you very much i appreciate it <laughs> thank you it's nice thank to you. Meet you guys keep your head in a swivel and stay safe too there are some there's some riffraff around here I was waiting. It had been a long time since I spoke with him. Good David? cigar weather? Steve, it is. It's perfect cigar weather. It's beautiful outside. All right. So yeah. apparently you had some, some insights. You wanted to sit down and talk. I don't know how familiar you are with what this segment is with Change My Mind that we do. Um, it's basically the idea is not a cable news edited sort of talking point gotcha match. Okay, Everything I like is that. completely unedited um, where we can rationalize our positions on controversial topics. Obviously, you've seen today the Women's March. A lot of people talking about rape culture, male privilege. So. Uh, male privilege, as they've described it, uh, not a thing, in my opinion, and if you disagree, you're more than welcome to change my mind. Okay. Yeah, I would say I disagree in the sense that I do think male privilege is real in the sense that, biologically speaking, men are born inherently stronger, they have higher testosterone levels, sure. so they're able to protect themselves physically a lot more than a woman who might be untrained in a martial art or something. Yeah. And in that sense, they have an inherent strength advantage when it comes to protecting themselves, such as walking around the streets late at night. Yeah. You know? And in that sense, they do have a certain privilege. Yeah, I would say that's an advantage, a biological advantage. Right. Right, that men are physically stronger, women are physically weaker, sure. Yeah, I, w I wouldn't necessarily disagree with that, but that's not really what they're talking about here. As a matter of fact, some women have said the opposite, where they've said, you know, I don't need your protection, I don't need your help, I can take care of myself physically. Um, you can even listen to some of the, the speakers here, so I, I think have, some of them yeah. would disagree with you. But uh, I don't disagree with you at all. I think then maybe we would both agree there are no legal rights, and we're talking about privilege, we're talking about systemic discrimination. There are no legal rights afforded to men 
not afforded to women in 2020? I don't disagree with you entirely on that point. Where would However, you disagree at that all? that being said, I didn't hear any of the speakers today saying that they don't need men's help, they don't need men's support. In fact, I, I didn't feel say like men's help, I talked about men's physically protecting them. Okay, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and I, but I, I agree with I you, I think women are very that. weak and very vulnerable to I, being attacked by men. I don't, I, you know, I don't agree with that, but if you, if you look, so, most of the Wait, 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 wait I'm agreeing violence, with you, I'm confused. Okay, well, I, what I'm saying is that if you look at most of the violent actions, yeah. you know, they are caused by men, and they are perpetrated by men. Well, what, I guess which violent actions would we be talking about? Um, you know, physical harm, rape, um, things of this nature. Okay, so they are the ones who commit those crimes more often. Men are, yeah. Than women. Than women. Correct. Yeah, that's probably, men by their very nature are more aggressive, but men are also disproportionately the victims of these crimes, more so than women. By other men. Yes, often. Unless we're talking about domestic abuse where the rates are actually pretty similar, men to women, women to men, but right. as you said, women are weaker, so it's not as treated as big of a deal. They have different advantages. I wouldn't like to use a word such as weaker, you know, um, but obviously when we're talking about biological strength, then yes, so men have the advantage. Um, but of course, so that would mean women are weaker. I don't. I mean, that's like a trigger word that you can use because to say women are weaker. I mean, that's. I, I don't think there's a lot of different types of strength. And women are physically weaker than men. Sure, sure, sure. But you know, it's important to delineate that from all of the other types of strength that there are. Sure. That women might have, and women do have more than men. Right. Like, for example, like what? Like e emotional strength, like intellectual strength, things okay. of this nature. So you think women are s smarter than men? I think, yeah, I don't think there is any difference, biologically speaking, between a woman's intelligence and a man's intelligence. Oh, well you said, you said intellectual strength as though it's an advantage. So you're saying it's equal, not uh, that women are smarter. You know, most humans are very similar in that aspect. And there's not a difference between any certain race or uh, gender in terms of intellectual capacity. Yeah, I think that's pretty, I would agree with that. Okay. But you listed those as advantages. You said, for example, you didn't want to use the word weaker in relation to physical strength. You said that was a trigger word, but then you said women have some advantages over men, and then you listed emotional strength and intellectual strength. So I'm confused. It sounded like you were saying that they're emotionally stronger than men I, or intellectually? I think they could be. I think they could be emotionally stronger than men. Okay. And, yeah. and men are physically stronger than women who they're weaker physically. That being said, movements like this are extremely important because it's important for us as men to show solidarity with our women and with all certain people who are sharing this experience that we have. Yeah. And we're all trying to get the same exact thing, which is just a better life for ourselves, for our family, for our community. So I think it's very important to show our unity and our solidarity with, with people that we maybe we don't even ag agree with. Yeah, well, I do show solidarity, but I show solidarity with women who share my values, not because of their gender. Most of these women here wouldn't represent the values, not only of myself, but of half of the women in America. Okay, yeah, I guess what are, what are the values here that you're showing by saying that, you know, male privilege is a myth, that uh, men are, in all terms, stronger than women, oh, I didn't that say women that. are weaker? You said that. Okay. Well, I, I heard you, said you say men it. are physically stronger than women. I said so. Women are physically weaker than men. That's what I heard you say. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I was agreeing with you. Okay. Now, I yeah, I wouldn't. Is, like your, to is say, your problem is with the word weaker? Uh, yes. Exactly. So you can say men are stronger than women physically, but you think it's inappropriate to say women are weaker than men? Yeah, because we're not putting it in the proper context. Yeah. Okay. What would be the proper context? Strength. Strength. Period. But yeah, going but I, in I, that sense. Strength. Going in sure. that sense. And I think you agreed with me on this, that men do have that male privilege when it comes to having that strength, that physical strength sure. of being able to go around and have more, uh, more confidence that they won't be raped or taken advantage of or, well, no, or that's really not assaulted. True. Men are raped far more often. If you look at other countries around the world, there are several instances where women are raped and the accusers end up going off scot-free. I agree, you know? yeah, especially like in Islamic countries, or, Sharia law. Or, you know, this just happened in India not too long ago. Yep. You know, and then the accuser or, or the, um, the, the victim was on her way to court and there was another tragic attack where they actually set her on fire. I know. So it's very important for these mo movements where we show solidarity that it's not just an American 
It's not just for people in the United States. We need to show our values, which I hope you would support as Americans. That women shouldn't be burned. we show our solidarity with not only other men, but other women sure. and everybody all around the world in order to support the values which maybe you and I have in common, which I'm not sure what your values are. I'm, I'm yeah, well, sure. no, I certainly would, would value that. I don't, I don't think that women should be uh, burned alive for accusing men of, of rape or, or being raped. Or should, would you agree that they should not be raped? Of course. Okay. Yeah, then. But thank God we don't live in a rape culture in the United States where rapists are prosecuted and convicted. Now, I don't see a lot of these marches going on in India. Um, I would like to, and I haven't seen any signs of people talking about liberating women in India or Islamic countries. Would that be something you'd like to see more of? I would like to see you fight the, the or, or propose the argument that male privilege is a myth in other countries that are not the United States. Uh, what do you mean? I think male privilege might is not a myth in places like Islamic countries or Saudi Arabia where women didn't have the right to drive by themselves until recently. That's true. I don't, but in the United States, there are no rights afforded to men that aren't afforded to, to women. Now, that being said, I agree with you that men, you know, women are physically weaker than men. Men are stronger than women. Um, I don't necessarily consider that a systemic privilege. I consider that a biological advantage. And I would agree with you, not on intellect, not on necessarily uh, emotional capacity, but on the flip side of that coin, we probably agree, women enjoy some biological advantages or privileges that men don't. So you're right? saying that we are both privileged, that yes. men and women are privileged? Yes, in different, in different ways. ways. Okay, yeah. all right, I well, agree with you. You agree with me on that? Yeah, well, I think we've just reached an agreement. Well, yeah, I think we agree on, on a lot. Um, what, I do, what I do disagree with is obviously uh, the perpetuation of this idea that there's a patriarchal society or male privilege or a rape culture, or that if we want to support women, we have to support these women. So see, I support the women who've showed up who are pro-life women, who, women who uh, maybe support the values that I support, and they're women too, and that makes up you know, 50% of the country. So I think it's a misrepresentation of uh, the women of America uh, to take this march wholesale as emblematic of all women's points of view. See, I would disagree with that. I okay. think that this march is actually purely, case in point, pro-woman. Well, no, it's, there not, are all kinds pro of pro-abortion pro signs, pro-Green New Deal signs. I mean, this is pro-leftist democratic policy. Nevertheless, it is, it should be a woman's right to choose what is able to, what they're able to do with their own body. I mean, it should not be up to men, you know, in government to decide what we can do, what we can have our, our own bodily autonomy. Sure. I would hope that you would agree with me. So let me clarify, abortion was not one of the topics of discussion on that day. But since this gentleman brought up a woman's right to choose, uh, I thought it warranted a bit more exploration. Um, I, I would agree that no one has the right to tell somebody else what they can do with their own body, provided they're not hurting someone. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. The baby in the womb is not their body. I guess we disagree on that. Why? So let me ask you this. You believe that the baby in a woman's womb is you believe that's her body not a different body i believe yeah they're inherently connected so how many fingers does a woman have that's that's besides the point no it is the exact point no how many feet does she have does a woman have a penis if it's a boy yeah see i i completely disagree with the whole premise of this notion because you're saying that the baby inside of the mom is separate and disconnected you're saying it's the same so how I'm many saying feet they does are a woman connected have? i'm saying they're connected you said it's the same body I, I want to make sure i understand you said the woman has the right to do whatever she wants with that baby and by the way i understand that women like to uh, people like to go to this argument if i disagree with them because if i have a penis i can't have an opinion but you're surrounded by a lot of women who disagree with your point right and so I how many them. how many I, fingers and uh toes does that woman have if it's her body does she have 20 fingers and toes either does she way still have 10? either way i still support women whether they are pro-life which i don't agree with whether they are pro-choice i support them Plain, point blank. How do you? How and can you support this both? Pro women, because I am not someone that says if you don't believe in my values, if you don't believe in what I stand for, you don't have any rights. You don't have a right to speak. No, this is America. Oh, no, no one's In America, that. you have rights, sure. and you should be able to speak your mind as you are. You should be able to basically say whether you are pro life, whether you are pro choice. Great. I want you to be heard. Sure. And that's what this march is about. What is showing it solidarity to me, with forgive women. Forgive me for a second, but you were the one who said, um, I should have no say in what a woman does 
with her own body, correct? So you said, I have no right to an opinion. And then I said, but myself, along with many women here, and all bio uh, biologists would tell you that that is not her body, the baby in the womb. So well, the only person here arguing that someone has no right to an opinion is you, that I don't because I have a penis. What's your name? Steven. Steven, I should not have a right to tell you that you should not be able to smoke that cigar. I should not have a right to tell you that you should not be able to drink alcohol or do whatever it is you want to do Agreed. as long as you are not hurting somebody else. I agree. That's, what I, that's where I'm coming from. I agree with you. Now, I may have a different opinion. I may have an opinion that says, I don't think you, you should do sure. crystal meth. But whether you want to do that or but not, what a that's trip. your body. If, if you've never tried meth, what a trip. <laughs> I'll take your word on okay, that. Okay, all right, we'll take my word for it. No, but I'm still saying uh, it's not uh, an accurate comparison because we're talking about another body. You have yet to explain to me. Let me ask you this. When does this become another body? Here's a fetal development chart. I wasn't even planning on talking about abortion today. Okay, yeah. You know, honestly, me neither. And uh, I'm sure you already have talking points. No, no, know, I just want, I just want to ask your opinion. So you say it's the woman's body. Where on this chart does it become a separate body? <laughs> Once they cut the umbilical cord. Not saying that, you know, abortion should be up until that point. Why not? Well, that's just not my values. But, but why not? If it's not a person, if it's not another body, what's, why shouldn't you be able to abort up until the head crowns? I, I don't think it's the right thing to do. Yeah. Why? I don't understand why. If it's if it's just well, why a part do you, of a woman's body, you, it's like clipping a toenail. Why do you think that you know there should not be any abortion? Why do you think that it is not part of a woman's body? Yeah, because the only way to accurately and consistently delineate uh, what constitutes a person would be at conception. What about a and zygote? that's the biological? Yeah. So let's go. I would even say this. Do you realize it's that that you is that little zygote? Do you realize your hair color, your facial hair, your bone structure, how whether you were an in or an Audi, whether you would grow chest hair, your intellect, your genetic code that is entirely unique to you, separate from the mother and the father, is created at the moment of conception. It's the only way to accurately and consistently delineate. Now, if you don't believe that that's the case, that the idea of a new unique body shouldn't be the standard bearer, then you need to have a pretty clear litmus test. And it sounds to me like you just said, well, I don't think up until the umbilical cord is cut, but I still think it's wrong for abortion to happen that late in the pregnancy, but I don't understand Incorrect. why. Okay. Incorrect. You are, you are misrepresenting what I said. Okay, that, I don't want it. So you then, know, I was basically saying that the, the baby um, is connected to the mother quite literally until that time. Okay, because you asked me when are, when do they stop being connected? So if it's no, I asked you if it was the woman's body, and you said it was. I believe that women look whether it is a separate life, you know, or or whether it is you know able to be independent on its own, which I don't think you know even up until any of these stages. No, of course it, not. It I'm be, well past that. Up to two and a half, sound, it wouldn't be viable. You know. You so, leave it on the balcony and in, in the winter would die. So I, I think don't that think... this is something that we as, you know, moral people that can disagree, that have differing opinions and different points of view should come to, to an agreement through discussion, through disagreement, sure. bringing our own valid points of view, just as yours is, is equally as valid as mine. However, I would have to defer this to, you know, scientists or, or people who are more educated on this matter, not saying that your opinion is is there for no. No, no, you know, scientists value, agree with me. I do value your opinion. Yeah, um, well, that's where my opinion comes from, is science textbooks. Okay, okay. Um, that's what defines life. It begins at conception scientifically. We can change, and I'm saying if you would like to change that, you can, but your barometer, which is as long as it's attached, if I'm not mistaken. My, what I'm saying is a woman, now in my point of view, I think, you know, generally first trimester is safe, um, even going up to, you know, some parts of the second trimester, okay, uh, I get a little bit of hes hesitation when it gets anywhere past that. But then again, why? I just don't think it's, it's proper, you know? I think that by then, you know, too much of it has formed where it, now it is more of a viable uh, baby, more, more of a viable um, human being. Okay, so you're against abortion in the third trimester? You believe that shouldn't that shouldn't be allowed? I think that abortions should be able to be provided because 
if you don't give people the option to do it cleanly, safely, then they're going to do it on their own. And so you're even in a third trimester, but you just said that at that point it's have, a viable You're going to have so people laughing. taking that into their own hands, and then you're going to have a loss of life. I mean, murder according to your own definition you said in the third trimester it's, I'm, it's I'm not talking, right i'm talking about you know one where you don't have any uh, medical overseeing where you don't have any doctors that are a part of it um but and, it would still be and it can, ending it a can life cause in the third a trimester. lot of issues there oh. you know by uh by not having these women in a healthy sterile safe environment so you're against abortions in the third trimester except in a healthy safe no 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 once again misrepresenting what i'm, I'm saying. trying to understand your point i i am pro women's choice for them to do what they want with their body up until when point blank period what they want to do with their body so just up like until it just no 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 okay so then no, up until just when? like the same exact way up until that when? i am for you smoking your cigars doing whatever you want with your body I am for women to have that choice, to have that education, to have that availability and sure. that security of being with a doctor. Got it. All the way up until the umbilical cord is cut. No. Okay, so then no. up until when? I'm not the arbiter to say. In my point of view, I would say up somewhere up until, you know, in the uh, generally in the second trimester. Okay. But of course, every case so is different. So what changes from the second trimester to the third trimester that makes it unacceptable in your opinion? Obviously, we know that there is more development happening. But I think it's very important to look and see what where is the phase of development because as we know, different organisms, different babies okay. develop at faster rates than others. Okay, so forgive me. What was your name again? David. David. So David, if David, you're, you can wave your wand right now. Um, I'm just trying to understand your position on abortion. You can determine abortion law. It is legal up until? Whether you or I agree with it or disagree with it, can we agree that abortion, if it's going to happen, which we know people are going to abort their babies anyway at a certain point shouldn't it be safe shouldn't it be in an environment where they won't potentially die because you know of, the baby's of always dying i'm talking about the mother well, i'm talking about the baby and so i'm asking you you are president you can you're a dictator abortion is legal up until i'm not a dictator i'm not a dictator in that world and i would not do it without the advisors without my advisors both you okay. know doctor advisors, okay. scientific advisors, and I would want to hear what the people have to say. Okay. You know, right. I'm not a dictator. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying you're a dictator. I'm saying in a perfect world, I'm trying to understand where you draw the line with in abortion, perfect, but you're not. In a perfect world, we don't have abortions. In today's obviously. world, where do you draw the line? Final go. My, my final go, I say today, we need to have safe and available abortions for women who require it, who need it, who aren't as advantaged and as privileged up as the people who, who have more capital, more financial resources as us. Up until when? I'm not the one to say that. Okay, so I didn't misrepresent your view at all. You've just not expressed it. Okay. Thank you though, I appreciate it. Okay. I don't want to go around in circles, appreciate but I appreciate it. taking the time, brother. Thank you, David. Uh, now, like that conversation, we ventured into a different topic with Alexis and uh, ended up talking a bit about rape culture. Also, you may recall that in that video, and if you want to see it, a link is in the description or playing in this box, uh, a transgender individual opted to refer to me as a dumpster fire and assault me with a hobo, hobo's Tupperware container. You know what? Go watch it. I don't want to spoil it. Alexis. Alexis. Steven, Hi. nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Now, I know that you came up and wanted to have a conversation. I don't know how familiar you are at all with kind of this segment that we do. Mm -hmm. Changed my mind, but let me just explain it to you um, quickly so we kind of understand where we're coming from. Sure. The idea behind this is to have uh, the opportunity to rationalize our positions on controversial topics okay. um, without it being edited like you see on cable news, scoring points, it's completely unedited. Um, and as it relates to today, we've just talked about male privilege, but right now uh, we've also seen a lot of signs regarding rape culture here in the United States. Not a real thing. Rape culture is a myth. If you disagree with me, you're more than welcome to tell me where I'm wrong and change my mind. Okay, uh, yeah, I do disagree with you. Okay. Uh, I, I, for a lot of reasons, uh, rape culture is, it's something that's been going on for not just decades, but for hundreds of years. And it spans cultures and countries all across the world. And, and it, it does lie very much within um, male privilege. And okay. rape culture is, 
is compounded by lots of variables. So whether that's in the workplace, um, male or female, um, actively engaging with women or men in inappropriate ways, or perhaps you're walking down the street and a woman is wearing a short skirt so someone feels that's that's acceptable to touch her ass. And I'm sorry, I don't know if you can say that. Is good. Um, I mean, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> you shouldn't do that. No. Yes, but it's the it's but you can say it's it. this capacity where even law enforcement, when a woman a woman who is told if you're assaulted, please go to the authorities. They will handle it. And then someone in a privilege of power, let's say a cop or an attorney or whatever, they ask the question, well, what were you wearing that night? That mm. permeates. Bullshit, it, is, it is bullshit. I'm so yeah. sorry. And sorry. you think rape culture is a fucking Can you, myth? Can you just wait? We'll have a conversation don't afterwards. I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. There's no conversation that needs to be fucking had. Rape okay. is fucking serious. Rape has happened to me four fucking times. And I'm sick and tired of this fucking debate. Men need to respect women. Period. So you should respect women. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I am a woman. So fuck you if you don't Sir. think so. I don't really have time I, for this. I, and I don't have time. My no, mistake. You're going to let me speak because uh, here's my truth. I've been raped four privilege. times. I've known women that have been raped multiple times gruesomely. And how dare you sit up here and try to say that women aren't worth respect. I, Fuck you. I didn't say that. I am a woman. I just became a woman. It's just like, are you fucking kidding me? People don't even respect me, period. And I'm, I mean, I'm already black, so it's just like, uh, yeah, that already goes against me anyways. But still, Fuck might, you, might you, you piece of living garbage ass dumpster fire trash gum on the bottom of my shoe. Oh my god, I wish I had a tissue for the blood. I would fucking. Sure. Uh. Might I suggest it's your behavior, not because you're black or a woman. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Can I stop here? Can I stop here? Can I stop here, please? She has just made a statement about being assaulted, which is very vulnerable and it's very scary to do. Sorry, she just called me a. I, I understand. Yeah, the I understand. gentleman just called me a fucking piece of shit. So she, I'm saying that's. She. Sorry, she my mistake. Just made a declaration. So when did painful. she go from male privilege to female privilege? Because she just said she only became a female recently. That's not the conversation we're having. It is now. She, that's not the conversation. That's not the conversation. Well, you just I gave them into. the right to come in and interject. No. So I would like to discuss that. You said this video is for the purpose of having a discussion, mm -hmm. and it. Yeah. And it wasn't okay the approach that she made, but it also wasn't okay to antagonize and to and to just. Do How this. did I antagonize? If we're gonna have a conversation, let's go back to what we were originally talking. Well, no, about. I think this is important because I think that's an example mm -hmm. of female or trans privilege right there. Are we talking about rape privilege or trans privilege? Because no, I want to stay on one second. topic. Are, is it? Are we talking about? What was that? No, well, that's when we're talking about rape culture, and well, we were also yeah. talking about privilege. So, so I'm going to finish what I was saying earlier. Well, I would have liked to finish as well, but since we were and interrupted, I do think we, that wasn't my fault. And no, I brought us back. No, but you did step in when I was and trying to. And I brought us to. back to us having this conversation on your video. I brought us back because you weren't helping the situation, so I brought us back. Well, it's so not I'm about gonna, helping the situation; gonna, it's about I'm being truthful. Finish, truth matters. I'm going to finish saying my okay, truth. Okay, go ahead. Your okay. truth. Let's hope it's the truth and not what that lady was saying. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. So within- I believe that's the, a man. And you're entitled to that belief. Sure. That woman, very upset, made very valid points. Made one zero them, valid points. One of them being that if you go to the authorities and they ask you what you were wearing, whether you were as covered up as I am, or if I was wearing something with my cleavage hanging out to here, unfortunately, people within law enforcement will say or insinuate that you had what's coming to you because of what you were wearing. That is one of the compounds that come with it. Uh, rape culture Any statistical is... bearing to substantiate that claim? Can you elaborate more? Well, you just indicted our entire police force, so do you have any statistics that would show that rape is dismissed and cops say if you wore a short skirt, you deserve it? Because the statistics that I've looked at, rapists are actually convicted at the same rate as all other violent criminals, even more. And. That's great that there's a conviction rate for that. And I'm sorry, I don't have uh, the stats on me right now. And what I've read of legitimate research and what I know of, and it's not about that. It comes down to that should never be insinuated within any context of a woman saying that she was assaulted or raped. It should not be invited in for you to insinuate that what one was wearing had anything to do with the matter. I would never do that. I don't know that police do that. It's pretty well documented by women. Where? Many people in this country. I'm sorry, I can't come up with that right now for okay. you off the top of my head. Well, I think that matters. It does matter. And I think I'm it not... matters to have those resources yeah. because statistically yeah. it's not reflected. 
and what statistics tell you differently? That well, all statistics the that we have available to us uh, as far as reported rapes, how often rape occurs, uh, trials for rape, and convictions. For, from which sites? Uh, FBI and DOJ. Okay, this, and yeah. And RAIN. Yeah, and I'm sure that if you, if you want Rain to look up a, statistics. RAIN is a, is a, actually a... I know what RAIN is. Okay. I know so what RAIN is. So they okay. all reflect that. Okay. Was that mansplaining? Mm, no, just you sounding like a bit of an ass. Okay. No offense. Yeah. No offense. Contrary to our friend there previously. Oh, I'm not saying that how they came up and screamed at you was acceptable because sure. that's not going to create a cohesive conversation right. at all. You it just really excuse doesn't. the behavior. I do not... You just excuse the behavior, and that's not... If you're going to let me finish my sentence... I'm sorry, you just, I, I'm sorry, but you just Are spoke you in a paragraph me? and then I responded, so I'll let you continue. Okay. But thank I would you. like to speak at some point. Oh, thank you for letting me speak, and I will happily let you speak in a moment. But in regards to that incident, since we want to continue bringing it up, when a woman says that woman or male, however you see her, I see her as woman, uh, when they have said, I was raped four times, that is excruciating for any person and to publicly say that no woman should have to scream in the streets that she was raped and that person didn't have to scream no they didn't but they felt that the need to and that was extremely painful for that person that was very hard for that person and i respect that how difficult that was for that person okay that and i wanted to give that person a hug and they wanted to walk off and that's okay yeah that's okay you know what usually happens that's an example of female privilege there Mm -hmm. if that's a man we treat them very differently, and I'm sure you're aware of this. Oh yeah, it's, and it's There's not There's accountability fair. between men. Oh, absolutely. That yeah. isn't the same case with women. Men don't get in men's faces and, and behave that way because really? there's fear of ramifications, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. So let me ask you this, define woman. Woman? Uh, Just because I think we're missing each other here, and I uh-huh. don't want us to uh, you know, have misconnections. So that sort of spurred this, what is a, a woman when we're talking about men's privilege rape culture? Define woman for me. So I don't get it wrong. Well, a woman is any person who defines herself as. Um, if you're looking at, biologically speaking, a woman is someone who has female parts. Her anatomy is that of a vagina and having um, just female parts. And then for me, I know I'm a cisgender female. I know this about myself. Okay. But it's not about... It, it doesn't matter what I define myself as. It's I ask others what they define themselves as. Well, does, and that's you it. said biologically female parts. Obviously, our friend there wouldn't have that. Um, that's so one would that be included? Okay, so but that's your definition of it. That's one definition of it. What's your definition of it? So that way I'm not stepping over any bounds. What's any, your definition? Any of it? person who uses the pronouns he, I mean, I'm sorry, she, and who identifies as such, okay. I respect what they identify themselves as. I do not ask them what their parts are. I do not have, now if there's a conversation about who's going to be able to bear children, I will be able to because of what's Well, because I also of my think parts, it matters right because it. we'll be discussing statistical realities, data that would separate men and women. And so I think it's important that we agree on what would be defined as a woman versus a man. So you're defining it that way. I would tell you the data then the statistics that I present. Maybe you um, find it to be completely invalid because it, 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 they always include biological women. So, um, okay, I would like uh, to continue the idea of rape culture. Uh, I'd like to stay with the United States, if that's okay, because I would sure. agree with you that there, is, there are rape cultures um, elsewhere across the globe, and I think that's a real problem. Mm-hmm. In the United States, though, the idea of rape culture, and perhaps you could define it for me, mm-hmm. but as it's defined in academia on campus, is a culture society where rape is prevalent and or permissible. Now, it sounds to me like you were insinuating that's the case because women aren't believed by the cops if they go forward with rape. Um, is, is that sort of your, your presupposition here as to why the United States is a rape culture? Yes, partially okay. so. But as said before, there's a lot of other compounds that come with it. Our, if there's law enforcement that doesn't help protect women, yes, that's absolutely going to permeate uh, rape and it being a culture. Um, but and Do you think that's the case here? I, I mean, think that's a large, significant um, reason why rape culture exists, why women are very f- afraid to go to the police because it's a traumatizing, um, it, it's, it's just traumatizing to tell your friend that you were raped. It's traumatizing to go to law enforcement because they're going to ask you to tell you their story and then you're going to be asked to say it again and again. And when there's a single doubt because of a piece of clothing or the time at which you were out, whatever the case may be, and this is not just for women, this is for, for men too, because, sure. you know, m- men are assaulted and raped as well. And it's even harder for More men. More than women, yeah. 
I don't know the numbers on that, so yeah, I can't say. Yeah, include say. the prison population. Oh yeah, within prison, most definitely. And that, and that matters because men, or we're talking about male privilege, mm -hmm. are convicted and sentenced much more harshly for the exact same crime as women. So more men are incarcerated, and overall, men are raped more because of the incarceration rate. So that would be a female privilege. Oh yeah, if a woman rapes and assaults someone, they should be incarcerated in the same manner which a man is. Yeah. Now, still, you're going to hear of more female cases, and not necessarily, you're going to hear more female cases coming out, and it's, it's disappointing and very sad for men, especially in this country, who have been raped, because there's, yeah. there's a masculinity component that comes with that, and there's a lot of reasons why men don't come out. But rape culture exists within that, too, because a man who says another man was raped, um, that they may be told, well, you're gay, or you're this, or you're that. And unfortunately, yeah. um, that, per that permeates rape culture when another man confides in another man and says, well, you're, you're an F this, or you're sure. whatever. Well, a, a couple of things. So I think we need to look at a couple of components that you've, that you've claimed that I disagree with. The idea that rape is prevalent in the United States. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I would say no. Okay. So how, I guess, what define prevalent for me? Because for us to live in a rape culture would have to mean that rape is very common and we are permissible of it. Now, I know you think the, the cops and the legal system are. We can get to that. But before that, um, define what we considered prevalent for us to live in a rape culture. As a very well-developed nation, considering all that we have access to in terms of technology and, and education and everything, uh, looking at the Me Too movement, the percentage and the just the percentage of women who came out after it, in, after so many women came out in solidarity, it was, no one could believe, oh my goodness, that many women in this country have been raped or assaulted. The women or in the victim. country was in Hollywood. Okay, and you're saying that Hollywood doesn't necessarily reflect Yes, others. that is exactly what I'm saying. Why so? Because uh, the rape rate is far higher in Hollywood than the United States. The rape rate in the United States, the incidence of rape is very low and Hollywood is pretty high. So within Texas, Dallas, Houston, and San Antonio being the three largest cities for mm -hmm. human trafficking, yeah. where you know Terrible. rape is rape and assault are is chronic. Those are three major cities, and between the three cities, women, children, and men are carted off like cattle to be what we know, raped and assaulted, and everything. You're talking about like sex trafficking. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, no, I and, agree with you. That's not that's, a big proponent of the wall. That's here in Texas, not Hollywood. Yeah, no, it's, it's still, we're talking about Texas. Texas still would have a far lower incident of, incidence of rape than Hollywood. And I do think, um, do you have the stats on Texas specifically? Maybe it is higher than the national average. Well, I'm sorry, I was not prepared to come here today. Oh, okay. Not nearly as well as prepared as you are. Well, I guess how often do you think rape occurs? Well, pretty frequently considering some, not some, many of the women in my household, within my circles, within as someone who has volunteered with Planned Parenthood, as someone who has invited those conversations amongst other women and men in her life, it is far more common than ever expected to be. That's true. My wife volunteers at uh, crisis pregnancy centers that are right opposite Planned Parenthood, sort of okay. the opposite. Uh, but yeah, she, she understands that as well. She's worked with them. Um, well, I think the rates, the statistics, the data do matter, not the anecdotal. So um, for us to be a rape culture, how common would rape have to be? And then if you don't have an answer, we can sort of move on to the idea that it's dismissed. I, I think it's very hard to say how common it is when people still, we don't, even what's accounted for today and the data that's that's out there today is not truly reflective of how, how, how common so? it is. People are scared. People are scared. Especially if you're a black woman in this country, you're, it, it's very scary because you're more likely to have been assaulted. You're more likely to experience police brutality. And that's just a black woman. But women in this country, men in this country are very scared to talk about this. Now, to clarify, this section did get a bit redundant. It droned on and we were discussing rape culture, which wasn't really the topic of the day. So I'm going to speed through a bit here, but the entire conversation is available unedited uh, at lidewithcredit.com slash mug club. Trust me, you're not missing anything, but I wanted to provide full disclosure. Here we go. So for example, we can go to like Kavanaugh. Mm -hmm. Do we believe every woman who makes an accusation? I think. And I use that because, you know, since then we found out that all of them have been verifiably false. And that was a man whose reputation was smeared in the public eye. So there's a danger there as well. Oh, we I, fully, just I fully supported her going up on that stand. Okay. And I, Even though there's no evidence and they've recanted that it's not true. No, I don't support Kavanaugh for a lot of reasons. But, but we're not talking about a lot of reasons. We're talking I, about him being I, accused of the heinous crime of rape, which we now know to mm -hmm. be false. 
I still won't support Kavanaugh, and that's... That has that's, nothing to do about supporting Kavanaugh. Can you defend a man's innocence against false allegations of rape? I don't think any man should go to prison or anything like that if they didn't com commit the crime. Right, but should a man's reputation be tarnished if he didn't commit the crime at all? Well, as, should we I, believe Christine Blasey Ford? Should we believe Julie Swetnick? As soon as a woman's reputation is not tarnished, then I will try not to tarnish a man's I, reputation. Oh, okay. I'll put them to the same bar. Is it immoral for someone who knowingly made up, fabricated a rape story, is it immoral for that person to do so publicly and ruin a man's life? Because that's what happened. Three times. If it happened and that's it her did. story, I believe her story. Okay, first off, there is no story, and the two people, we're talking about Ramirez and Swetnick, who made up the stories, recanted it, said it's not true. And Christine Blasey Ford only provided um, evidence of corroboration that was immediately discounted by the people who were questioned regarding the corroboration. So my question is, why do you believe her when there is no evidence and there is evidence to the contrary? I believe her because I, I can't imagine what undeniable pressure she was under. And it's not an excuse for anyone to make up a story, but I do believe that she, her family was threatened, her, the people she loved were threatened, and it takes, it's an unbelievable amount, um, amount of bravery for what she did. It takes and an unbelievable amount of bravery to lie about being raped? For her to go to the stand in front of many privileged males who already discounted her story and to still go up there, I, I applaud her for that. You, so if someone is knowingly lying about rape, you applaud them for it? I don't know if her story was a lie. It is. Okay, what about Julie Swetnick and Ramirez? They said it was a lie. Were it's they not, brave? It's not the first time rape victims have recounted because of, unfortunately, tremendous amount of pressure. So I can't say that in those two instances, but it's not, un, it's not undocumented, it's documented okay. for women to I will say this, rape because... is really, really bad. As a matter of fact, I would advocate for harsher sentences than we currently have for rape. And certainly compared to my home country of Canada, where a lot of them get off scot, -free. well not scot-free, but they often get off with less than a 20 year sentence. Um, I think that they should practically be buried beneath the railroad tracks. Rape, absolutely terrible, heinous crime, completely impermissible. I'm so glad that we prosecute these people and put them behind bars. That being said, can you say falsely accusing someone of rape? Bad. Uh, oh yeah, it's bad. Okay, good. It's bad. So we would both agree that what happened with someone like a Kavanaugh or people who are accused of rape with no evidence is a horrible thing. We need to put a stop to that as well because that also diminishes real rape that happens. Yeah. That makes women more afraid to come forward. Un yes, unfortunately it does. I think the what you're speaking to were very publicized, it, very publicized occasions and they're, the lines between truth and reality very blurred. And no, they're not. No, they're not. No, they're not. I, this is where we're going to disagree. They're not. And by the way, okay. every high profile case that has destroyed men's lives, for example, Duke Lacrosse, those women were believed. Do you think that was a good thing? That that woman was believed? I'm sorry, I don't know who, which particular case. The Duke case Lacrosse this. team, woman claimed she was raped. This was a big thing. And they considered it not only a, uh, a hate crime, um, mm. not only a sex crime, but a hate crime. Uh, UVA, mm. Rolling Stone article, lives were destroyed mm -hmm. because the women, women were believed. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Mattress Girl, Columbia. I'm sure you know Mattress Girl. The guy mm -hmm. couldn't even go to his own graduation. We mm -hmm. now know that was completely false. Good thing or bad thing? I would love to give you 400 other examples that are... I don't need I'd, to. Those, good or bad, that women came forward I'm with no evidence and were believed. I'm not familiar enough with the details to say yes or no. And I won't give you a yes or no answer. Okay, let's assume I'm not lying. Are you familiar with Mattress Girl, UVA, or Duke Lacrosse? Because these are the right. highest profile rape bit. cases a before the Me Too, Harvey Weinstein, right? And they mm -hmm. all were proven false. Mm -hmm. So that was because women were believed, just like in Kavanaugh's scenario, without any evidence. Mm -hmm. And this is, by the way, the reason for this is under the guise of a rape culture. And so mm -hmm. under the guise that men should feel guilty and we should believe all accusers, several people's lives were destroyed with completely fabricated accusations of rape. Those instances, UVA, Duke Lacrosse, Mattress Girl at Columbia, Brett Kavanaugh. Good thing or bad thing that women were believed when it turned out they fabricated it? With the exception of Kavanaugh, I'm sorry, I'm still not gonna agree with you on that one. Okay. Okay, uh, for those other cases, I can only say that I am sorry for anyone's lives who were destroyed, who were innocent. And for all the women who felt to recant, perhaps because of pressure 
undue pressure by university systems, by law enforcement. I give my my no no no. no. My, this my has nothing to do with them. recant. Let's not try and soften it. If I can say rape bad, rape accusations bad, mm -hmm. but there's only one of us here advocating believing claims without evidence, and that's yourself. I believe in evidence. I believe in various forms of evidence. Okay. And according to what you've said here, and this is just we're going to disagree, you think that a claim is valid evidence? I think a claim is something that should be heavily considered with hopefully evidence, but it is... But a claim with no evidence should be... No, I think we should still try to fight. I think we should still try to make a case. Okay, but if there is no evidence... And we still and there's keep a claim, going. So you still yes. continue what? I'll still continue fighting and I'll still... If a woman comes forward with a claim of rape with no evidence whatsoever, mm -hmm. what do you do? What should keep the legal fighting. system do? I'm sorry, I don't, I can't say I have a solution for that. Put me on the spot, because I know that's the goal here. No, no, it's not the goal. I'm it not understanding where you're coming from. It is the goal. You think I can't, I have to ha have an absolute opinion and that I can't have um, perhaps an in-between opinion. You think I have to, because I say I believe in rape culture, that I want to convict all men and say that any man who looks at a woman sideways, that I need them convicted. You want me to have an absolute opinion on things that are very gray areas, and I won't I do it. I don't think that's a gray area. If I can say rape is bad, I believe it, be, should, it should be just rape as easy for bad. you to say a rape accusation, a false rape accusation with no evidence is bad. I think that's bad, but I'm not going to negate a claim either. I'm not going to throw out a claim. I won't do it. So what do you do with the claim? Sorry, if there's no evidence and there's evidence, no, this I'm matters not, because if we're talking about a matter. rape culture, I'm, it how does do we, matter. right now we handle rape as we mm -hmm. do other crimes. It mm -hmm. requires a preponderance of evidence. Mm -hmm. And rape is a very infrequent crime in comparison to other crimes with a similar conviction rate. By the way, men are raped more. So I have a problem with rape. But if you are insinuating that there is a rape culture, that rape is more prevalent than it statistically is, and that all claims should be believed, I am asking you, what do we do if there is a claim with no mm -hmm. evidence, and in Kavanaugh's case, or Columbia Mattress Girl's case, or UVA or Lacrosse, evidence to the contrary, what do we do? I think you should find evidence that corroborates stories, because it's not uncommon for if one person to experience the other who, to have experienced that. Sure. And to look at what, what are the university's stances on um, someone who is raped, because there are some campuses that will highly discourage you going to the police. How well documented are there cases of rape or this or that? How well documented or lack of documentation or what slipped under the rug because of reputation purposes? So it starts from a very, it starts okay. like looking at university systems or, 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 or state laws and looking at it from the very smallest minute side of things to the larger grand scheme of things. I, I don't understand what that means. So if we collect a hundred pieces of anecdotal evidence where one woman and a hundred others say that this man or woman did this to me, it's anecdotal evidence. Yes. Let me explain to you why that should be discounted and why testimony is the least reliable form of evidence. Do Even you realize, after 100 people? Yeah, let me tell you why. Do you realize that what you just did is you encourage a system of those in power? So in other words, right now, I could accuse you of a crime, and I could much more easily get 100 people to corroborate my story without any evidence just because I have an audience. Does that make it any more valid? It I could say that you raped me here, it there's makes no it, proof. It makes it valid. Now, once again, I'm not discounting that, yes, evidence is important, but it weighs into, if you, if 100 people said, I raped you, then, right. my golly, I could do that very easily. Something happened to where the lines between you and I got really blurred, and that needs to be looked into. That needs to be examined, if that's the case. What happened between you and I? And yeah, for damn sure, please, someone, you know, take us to a courtroom. And I want, you know, if, if they all say the same thing, then fine. But that needs to be examined. That needs to be examined. What happened? Okay, so your standard is just as long as people make the claim, then we need to uh, treat it as, as valid as any other evidence. I just disagree. I think disagree. we should weigh, weigh heavily into that. So. I think it's a very dangerous proposal. I believe in a, a innocent until proven guilty. We have a current legal system that I think is a much better standard bearer than 
X amount of people said someone unless, did something. Because that's what led to witch burning, and that's yeah. what led to you know women being afraid of coming forward in the first place. And innocent women Like in Islamic guilty societies as well. where you require a certain amount of witnesses, yeah. it's going to lend itself to men being able to gather more innocent witnesses. Innocent until proven guilty is a is is a good system by which we lead by. And I understand that if I lived in another country where guilty until proven innocent, innocent, yes, we'd be rotting in a jail. But I I know of. Ooh, I know of a story just recently, and I'm sorry I can't come up with, I can't say the name of this individual. Come on, that's inappropriate, sweetheart. <laughs> you feel better? Oh, are you offended by what I said? No, I just don't think it's necessary. Aren't you just feeding into it? You do realize that's a violent crime, correct? You're fine. Ah, so because there's no damage done, it's You're fine. fine. Okay. You're fine. Understood. Just recently... That doesn't bother you. What if that were a man? Because that's a woman. Wouldn't bother you. Not at this moment. Okay. I don't... F I think you might need to check your own privilege and bias. If you think that behavior is acceptable, if you think someone whipping something at somebody because they disagree with them is okay because I'm, okay, I'm fine... There was a hundred Trump supporters here and I didn't say a word to them. I smiled at them, waved They couldn't be less relevant. We've had someone who's come up and committed verbal assault, which is known as battery, okay. and then actual assault. And if I went up and kicked someone Sorry. and threw someone, yeah, it probably wouldn't be okay, but... Yeah. That's not okay. Oh, no, it's not okay. No, it's not okay. But you seem more offended at me calling uh, the man sweetheart. No, I just think goading a person isn't necessary. Well, I'm not goading. They're already down the street because that man is a coward. Mm. So I know you think they're brave. I think throwing something and running away, not very brave. 